Today, I'm going to Momocon, and you're coming with me. Momocon is an anime, gaming, and pop culture convention held in the Georgia World Congress Center, a big giant convention center connected to the Omni Hotel, which is where we'll be staying. Our little crew arrived on Thursday, and I participated in the time-honored tradition of looking for the first con-goer. Oh, first one, first badge. <laughs> and then I went off to get my own badge alone. Because Joe got him and his brother's badge mailed, but didn't ask me if I wanted my badge mailed. So now I gotta go get my badge by myself. But I don't even have to go outside because Yami's connected to the Congress Center. This is where Momocon used to be. The con might have moved halls, but Reg is still in the same place. JK, I thought Reg was down there because that's where it was last year. JK, it's up here, which is where it was for a couple years and now it's back here, I guess. What kind of line are we gonna get? It's moving. Yeah, it's moving. I like it when the staff members yell at you to get your out because it means the line moves. I really wish more cons had their staff doing this. There are a few cons I've been to, some Atlanta cons even, where the reg line quickly gets very out of control. And in my experience, the Momocon staff never lets the line get too overwhelming. And like, the last thing you want to do when you arrive at an anime convention is to wait in a five hour line. So thank you to the people yelling. I legitimately appreciate you. I don't know about you, but when I get to a con, I'm really stressed out until I have my room and my badge. Now I feel good and I can feel like I can have fun now. Yay. Look, look at all the people. Look at all the beautiful people. Everybody already cosplaying and construction worker senpai. Whatever they're doing, I'm sure it's important. So Momocon used to be in this hall and the Georgia World Congress Center has three different convention halls, essentially. It's three big ones. Uh, and Momocon used to be in this one and it was, you know, it's still a very nostalgic spot. Uh, but now it's in the middle one, which is bigger, but different. But this theater, the Sydney Marcus Auditorium, this is where they used to have the costume contest. And this auditorium is where I won my first award ever. So that has a special place. It looks like they are doing some events in here this weekend, which is cool. They didn't do that last year. This was completely excluded, but I'm glad they brought it back because it's a nice, it's a nice auditorium. And then this out here, this is the courtyard. This is like the best part of Momocon. This is where at night, Everybody's hanging out and playing music and stuff and in the day this is like this is where everybody like It's called posting up. It's when you're in a really nice cosplay and you want people to see it And you just kind of pick a spot and you stand there. That's called posting up. This is where people do that People also do that inside when it's hot but um before I knew Pins and Snip, who are not here this weekend, but I will miss them so much. I'm sure they're gonna watch this to see what they miss, but. So they have this giant Aku cosplay. It's Snip on stilts and Snip is very tall. And they were standing right here in Aku. And I came up and got a picture of them in my Undyne. And I had actually been Ashi the day prior. Uh, so I was very sad that I wore Ashi on the wrong day, but I do have a picture of them with me in Undyne before, I, before we were friends, which is so funny. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go back to the room now. Look how pretty! Okay, we're going into the Omni. We're gonna do this. No, we're not. I guess we're not. What? How do I get in? Ah! Okay. I got in. The beautiful view of the park and the... Joe, do you remember what the Ferris wheel is called? Skyview. Skyview Atlanta! It says it on the side of it. You just gotta zoom in. And one of the worst intersections in downtown Atlanta. Oh, it looks fine right now. Here's my day one fit. I'm wearing overalls in honor of Carolyn, who just lost Survivor. But, <laughs> but my plan is to go... Oh, I need my book! Hold on. My plan is to go to Casey's booth and uh, see if she'll do an interview, but also I want her to sign my book. I was getting this out and I put this skirt in the closet and then this happened. This is the dangers. This is the dangers of using hot glue. We're going. We're going. I have Casey's book. I'm gonna go up to her booth and have her sign it. It's gonna make her very happy. We have Joe. We have 
the young Joe's brother, who's a baby. Came to get lanyards for the boys because they got mailed badges, but look at all the little, those are little tabs from the badges. They're all over the floor. I threw mine away and I made Joe throw his away. Let's go see KC. So now, Momokan is in Hall B, which is over there. Now you go down here and there's the sign. You gotta go down several flights of escalators to get down to the dealer's room. And while this is fine on Thursday, sometimes when it gets more crowded, people will just stop in front of them for no apparent reason and back the whole thing up. So PSA, please get on the escalator or get out of the way. Let's see, this is where the old hall didn't have this, but now this hall has this beautiful little area right before the dealer's room with all this pretty greenery. And it's a, it's a popular spot to hang out. It's also a popular spot for pictures. It's also a popular spot to post up. We're going. I'm just talking to myself. Yay. Why am I waiting? Now it's stairs. Now I gotta wait for them. Oh, okay. Momocon has like the biggest arcade of any con I've ever been to. Look at that. It's all a bunch of rhythm games. It's amazing. Lots of dancey games. It's even bigger than last year, I think. Oh my god, I love Musica. I never get to play it, but I love it. Oh, I also really like Groove Poster. But then you keep going, and eventually you get to the dealer's hall. I'm sorry, what are they having? They're having a Toontown tournament. I should have entered it. I would have crushed. Toontown like the... Yes. Like, the, there's a trolley. How do you... Where you, you like, you do like, it's like Mario Party minigames against each other. In Toontown? Yeah, in Toontown. You're, it's, the news to me is that the Toontown servers are still up. That's the, the private, the oh my, private server. Oh my we, god. god. There's a Toontown tournament. And here's the dealer's stuff. We gotta find the cosplayers. Where did they stick the cosplayers? Oh my god, wait, I love this girl. Could I ask you a question? Yeah. You, you come to Momocon all the time, Every right? Year. I You are one of my favorite parts of Momocon. Oh, thank you. You were here, I came in 2016, mm -hmm. and you just made my day. Just, Cause just, this is just so much joy. You have a great con. You too as well. Joe, they got Johnny Rockets. And Nathan's. Brought it over from Sims You wanna share your thoughts on Nathan's? Subpar. <laughs> I want my book signed. Oh! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Make sure your thumb isn't in the camera. It's not. But I got my book signed and I whisked the gothic princess off to do the first interview of the con, which we got to do in the koi pond because nobody was around yet. And these were some of my favorite shots I got the whole con. I also really wanted to go get Casey first because she is my friend and I needed somebody to do the sponsor read to. And I have never been more proud of a sponsor segue. But unfortunately, I don't have a great one for this one. So this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Do you wanna learn how to use a camera or a gimbal or audio equipment? Do you wanna take your personal passions and turn them into a career? Well, Skillshare is the place for you. With thousands of classes in photography, videography, and audio engineering, you can learn how to do all of the jobs I have to do almost entirely by myself to do those interview videos. And Skillshare has hundreds of classes in creative career building. So if you want to learn a new creative skill and turn it into a career, or take your existing passions and turn it into your side gig, Skillshare can help you make that happen. While I am still working on trying to conquer the third dimension, I am also trying to improve my basics. So I've been taking this class on removing background noise so I can try to get some of the con noise out of the stuff I shoot at cons. I swear to God, someone is always just screaming for no reason. And I don't know if you noticed, but I did manage to get two videos shot at Momocon. I did the interview video and this vlog. And that's partially thanks to Skillshare's curated time management and productivity course. So no matter what you're trying to learn or improve on, Skillshare has something for you. And you can get access to the entire Skillshare library for an entire month 
free when you use the links in my description. So check those out down below. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's go back to Momocon. <laughs> Actually, so I'm gonna just go by, so I'm gonna use your link. <laughs> we did Casey's interview, it was very good. And now we're gonna look at the artist alley because the artist alley and the dealer's room are open on Thursday at Momocon, which is great. It's also giant. Starts way down there and ends at that wall. So it's it's giant. I lost the boys. Now I'm a lost child now. I lost my boys. There they are. I found them. This is my kind of booth. They don't have any little alpacas though. Isn't this one cream? This is cream, right? Joe confirms. Th that is cream. Alpacas, alpacas, alpacas. Pins and snip might not be here, but I found snip. I found Snip and I found something with Pins' energy. There's Pins and Snip. And they're right there watching over the artist alley. Oh my god, a cow print eat a bag. Oh wait, I want that! Oh look at the little carousel. Looking at how tall these are and just boom. Stunning. These concrete floors wear you out so fast. We're going to go back to the room and eat some food. Another great thing about Momocon is if you are at all overwhelmed by the indoor crowds, the GWCC has a pretty substantial outdoor sidewalk that can take you back over to the hotel and over to CNN, which at this point is just a food court. We're going to get food in CNN, but the CNN Center is not always kind to cosplayers but I want Arby's. And it's not Momocon if you don't get Arby's. So the thing about CNN is in the past couple years, they have been really, really strict with cosplayers. From my own personal experience, they would not let me in with face paint on. They would not let in a girl that even had very light foundation on who was dressed as Shigo. They also will not let you in with any kind of prop. And that even includes children because apparently I once heard a report of a little girl with a sword getting kicked out. But it is nice because this is connected to the Omni, so we can just go this way and go back to the hotel room. Oh my god, I forgot. Yeah, CNN's moving. What are they going to do with this building? Somebody will move in. Can it just stay a food court? Because that's the only thing I like. Oh, and the Cartoon Network store is gone now. But it is normal food at normal food prices, and they have an Arby. So even though I kind of have beef with them, I still come for the roast beef. Joe and I went back down to the con because I wanted to see the karaoke. Sakizo's hanging up. There's a big fan here, but we don't know why. We assume somebody must have flooded. But before we got down there, I wanted to get a shot with the Momocon sign, and please just listen to Joe taking this shot. Well, I wanted to see the karaoke. Here's the karaoke. Standing room only for the 30 person Bohemian Rhapsody. Outside looks more fun, so we're gonna go back outside. Once again, back outside, we partook in the time-honored tradition of con people watching. Look at, you can't see the bubbles, but there's lots of bubbles. Oh, there's the bubbles. Look at that man with the bubbles. A fight has broken out with a shark. We're not sure why. Oh, okay. Everything's okay. I don't know what that was. There's a little Mac over here that keeps jumping, like right next to these stairs. Oh, there he goes. There's Demon Slayer cosplayers just like dancing all cute. Oh, this is why I love being at cons. I just love seeing the stuff people just do. People dancing, and people fighting over sharks, even the vapors. Everything is wonderful when you're at an anime convention. I wanted to get a shot of the bubbles, but the bubble man sat down. I'm gonna go back up. One downside to staying in the Omni is sometimes there's a line for the elevator. So we went up and said goodnight to Skyview Atlanta, the park, and the bananas. And that was Thursday. Good morning, bananas. 
I got these bananas for the Discord meetup and Joe made fun of them last night and said they were way too green. And so we put them in the window to try to help them not be green. Uh, they look a little less green today, but hopefully they'll be okay by tonight. Today is Saki's O'Day. I'm gonna finally get to wear my ball gown to a con. I get to shoot with Alex, Alexandra Lee Studios, who is one of the most talented photographers that works in the cosplay space, like period. Like she does these incredible composite images. She did these awesome just works of art with me and Ronnie. She shot me last year at Momocon and Ronnie. And they're just, they're just, they're, she just makes pieces of art. And so I'm excited to be a part of some art today, uh, but that's at like 10 and it's like, it's almost eight. I wake up early. Um, so I'm gonna have my hotel coffee and I'm gonna get dressed, which shouldn't be that stressful because that cosplay is not that hard to put on, which never happens to me. So that's great, uh, but it should be good. I'm gonna get to be a pretty princess today. And this is the only costume I'm wearing this weekend. So I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna enjoy being a pretty princess. Joe's got Tears of the Kingdom going. We both already beat it, but there's so much to do. Neither of us have gotten anywhere close to 100%ing it yet. Okay, I figured out which one fell off. And I'm using one of these things. I only have red in there, but we're gonna get that back on. Now that I'm like looking at this one and seeing the glue on it, I actually don't think this one was hot glued because there's no like, I can still sew through it. There's no like blobs. And I am remembering that I think at some point I tried to get one of them on there with gem tech and I suspect that this one is the gem tech one, which would make sense because this one feels like hot glue and that does not feel like it's going anywhere, but this one popped right off. I don't have any scissors, so I have to do this. That's, that's what we get. <laughs> After getting the strawberry back on, I did my makeup. The human experience that when your eyes are a little bit puffy, you can like do your eyeliner better. Not that I, not that they're uh, exactly the same, but I, I just, I feel like when your eyes are a little bit puffy, it's like easier to do your eyeliner. She's done it. I got to do it. It wasn't that hard. The only hard thing about this cosplay is the bonnet. Cause I, I have a bunch of wig clips sewn in there, uh, but they're just hard to do with the Bertha on. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a strawberry ball gown baby today. And I'm big and I get to do this. And hope I don't get snagged on anything. But yay, I wanna go down, I wanna see Alex, we're gonna do a photo shoot. Yay. And with my cosplay on, I went down to meet Alex and got very quickly overwhelmed because at this point the elevators were really packed and I felt really bad about how much room my cosplay took up in these tiny elevators. I got very, very squished in the elevator. We're gonna, oh! Yes! but here's some footage of me shooting with Alex. And I don't know if I have any advice for photo shoots because I'm, I'm really not a very good model, but the big thing that helps me is working with people that really know how to pose you. You can see even in this, Alex telling me exactly where to put my hands, exactly where to tilt my head. And this stuff is important because even if you're totally experienced at doing photo shoots, you cannot actually see yourself, but the photographer can. But like, look at the way she gets me to put my hand on my face in a specific way. You need that, you can't see yourself. Anyway, after the shoot, I went back up to the room because I was just gonna change my shoes but I took off the entire dress to go to the bathroom and... Well, taking the dress off was a mistake because I did not want to put it back on. So I just I just don't want to go down there and be in a big cosplay in the crowds. Uh, it just doesn't sound fun. What does sound fun is running around trying to get people to interview. So I put on something I can do that in. So here's my little JSK 
I made this back in like 2021. It's Joanne's Halloween fabric. And the pattern is from a JSK that I have. I just copied the pattern. And then this is that Amazon blouse that literally everybody owns. And that's it. I'm not wearing a petticoat because I like to wear this JSK as like Lolita light. Like I'm not actually really trying to do a coordinate. I'm just, I'm just wearing this. That's okay. But yeah, we're gonna go down and bring all my equipment and we're gonna try to get some people to interview. Yay. It's Kiba time. Is that sheep? I'm good. Mm. You want higher? They're not even. Yeah, but I like it. I move the- Move the other one? Move the other one. Um, I, I like it closer to my nose. Okay. We'll get rid of this one. Yeah, but go further still. That's probably more a little bit Princess Mononoke-ish. I don't know. Kiba. Almost Kiba. Joe's poor Kiba hoodie. The zipper broke on it like right before hall mat. So I just installed a new zipper for him. Here's the one cute shot I got of Joe all dressed up in his iconic Kiba. It is not his only cosplay, but it is his favorite cosplay. But we ran around and managed to get four interviews before once again returning to the room. Well. Other than being tired, I'm having a good time. I was really excited because I did get to interview the Pikachu girl and I did see her on Thursday night, but I've seen that Pikachu girl at, at every Momocon and I, I remember seeing her on Thursday night of Momocon 2016 and that was the first Momocon that I like had fun at. Uh, the first Momocon I ever went to was Momocon 2013 and that was the first con that I ever wore my own handmade costume too. It was also my second con ever. I did not have a very good time. This was back when Momocon, it, I don't know how many years they were in the Hilton, but this year they were in the Hilton and it was way too small for how big the attendance had gotten for the con. And it was so, so crowded and I got so, so overwhelmed and upset. And my first handmade cosplay was not good. It was, um, I did Lady Rainicorn. I, I did not know how to sew back then. And I made a dress, but this dress was strips of chiffon, literally like just tacked, like little tiny hand stitches to a Forever 21 t-shirt. And they weren't even sewn together. It was just, strips of chiffon, unfinished strips of chiffon. So it was fraying everywhere. And because they were so badly attached to the t-shirt uh, and because they were so long, people stepped on them and they were ripping off throughout the day. So that was awful. So I did not have fun at that Momocon. But when I moved to Atlanta in 2016, uh, I came to Atlanta right after I graduated college in May of 2016 and I had just gotten into my new apartment, which I actually used to live really, really close to Momocon. And it was to the point where it was like, I could walk there. And I was like, Momocon is basically across the street and it was a week away and I really wanted to go, but I didn't have anyone to go with because I didn't have any friends in Atlanta yet. And I didn't have, I did not have any cosplay friends. I didn't, I didn't have any of that. And I just, I had literally like a week prior moved to Atlanta. So I had called my mom and I was telling her about it. And my sister heard about the conversation and she was like, well, I'll go. And so my mom drove my sister up who was living at home still at the time. And I went with my sister. I did go alone, I think on Friday. I think my sister was only there on Saturday and Sunday. But when I went alone, I distinctly remember, this is getting back to the thing I was talking about, was that I remember seeing the Pikachu girl and that she was by herself and that she was having a good time and that she was making people smile and she made me smile. And to me, she just became this symbol of the just wholesome joy that you can just get from being at an anime convention is just seeing somebody that does that <laughs> and comes by themselves, I believe. I don't think I've ever seen her around anybody else and just comes and brings, she's a harbinger of joy is what she is. So I was really happy to get her in the interview video. Uh, but yeah, and then we came back up to the room and I took a nap, uh, but I got a perk up because we've got the discord meetup at 7 p.m woo if you don't know uh the spacecraft 
is my Discord server. It's a Discord basically just dedicated to anybody that wants to learn how to craft or make cosplay or wants to help people craft or make cosplay. And it's just, it's this wonderful little soft and comfy community where people get together and we, we talk about sewing and armor and resin and crochet and everybody helps each other and it's just wonderful. My goal for the meetups is to have them like structured in a way that it encourages people to like make new friends because I, I've i gone to a lot of like Lolita meetups and I have always wished that they were more like that. The Lolita meetups that I've been to are more like we're all gonna get together and then there's no like actual like structured plan so if you don't know anybody it's hard to like break the ice yourself. But what I'm trying to do is do that for people so that they can get to know each other and make new friends. That's my goal, to make it a little bit easier for people to make new friends with people that they've probably already met on the internet. And you know, when you meet in real life, it can be a little, it can be a little awkward. So I'm trying to be the, the structure that takes the awkwardness away and lets people just become friends because that's that's just the great thing about cosplay is that's that's it, it we're, we have such a niche hobby that for a lot of us we don't have that many people in our everyday lives that we can really talk to about it and so it's it's really important for me to to try and help facilitate those relationships because they mean that they mean so much to me and i know that they mean so much to everybody else so that's the goal of that it's gonna be fun i we did one at katsukon we did one at hall mat and i did one at awa and the one at awa was just me and one person <laughs> a couple people had said at awa that they wanted to do it and then only one person showed up but at hall mat we had maybe six or seven at katsu we had a good amount of people in a circle i don't know how many people we're gonna have this time but i baked cookies baked cookies and I have bananas for anybody that doesn't want cookies or uh, is like a vegan or something. Cookies and bananas. Uh, and we're gonna play a little Jeopardy game. So I wrote out like cosplay questions and we're gonna play cosplay Jeopardy. So that, that should be fun. So I headed down with my cookies and bananas for the Discord meetup. Courtyard's pretty full now. It's real crowded now. <laughs> and we had a pretty good turnout. We had a really good time too. It seemed like everybody liked the Jeopardy game and we got a cute little group photo and all the cookies and all the bananas got eaten. So that's a win. Hey Beck. Hey. Hey. So Joe has had so many people want to take his picture in Cuba today. And he gets so many, oh my god, Kiba, that's such a good cosplay. He gets so many of those. And somebody took really nice pictures of him earlier. He's so popular. He's my popular cosplay boyfriend. It stopped as soon as I started filming it. Skyview Atlanta is freaking the f out. Did it break? No, 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 this is the... Oh, it's gotta like be going to music. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Goes. It's freaking out. That is pretty. This is the final fit of the night. Stolen Joe's jacket, Gretzko t-shirt, and the hall map bag is on full display. <laughs> I guess I never talked about this, but I won this in the hall map costume contest. And it's my favorite goddamn fanny pack now because it, it has multiple thingies and it fits a water bottle and my phone. And it like you can it can be a fanny pack, it can be this kind of bag. It has like a leg strap, but the leg strap only works if you're like wearing pants. And I don't wear pants. So that doesn't work, but I mean it's a great bag. And it look it's just so cute and anime. And it's like look at my look at my con bag with con stuff on it. How's your day been is Kiva? It's been good, it's been fun. What do you like about this cosplay? Um, it's easy. Why did you want to cosplay Kiba? <laughs> because he's cool. What's your favorite thing about your cosplay? It looks cool. It looks cool, but like which piece of it? The hoodie. You like the hoodie? The hoodie that I fixed 7,000 times? Mm -hmm. Joe's got a nice, speaking of nice bags, Joe's got a nice, he got a nice raw spring bag a dream hack and it's actually got like nice big cords. Joe got one for Momocon last year 
I love Momocon, but that bag broke like four times. Day one. To be fair, he puts a giant, giant ass water bottle in. Is that allowed? Is that allowed? I don't know if that's allowed. We went and found some of my buddies and we decided that we were gonna be extra and climb up on the side of this plant house. in the world, Haley, Hi. <laughs> who I've known since middle school, yep. and this She's is the bestie. her oldest friend, Emerald, <laughs> who I've known since like high school. Yeah. Now we have to introduce Joe again. And there's Joe, <laughs> the most popular Kiba at the con, because apparently he's the only Kiba at the con. For my viewers, Don't Joe is Sarah's. <laughs> I, he's <laughs> mine. <laughs> yeah, he's my boyfriend. <laughs> Finally getting footage of someone giving his picture. Oh, they want a selfie. You're so popular! <laughs> but after lots of good friend times being had, we called Friday done. Good morning. I'm vlogging in the hallway because the boys are not awake yet. There's a nice view of the park right here. How lovely. But it's Saturday. Uh, I had a really weird start <laughs> to the morning. I finally slept good. Joe actually had earplugs, so I got to put in earplugs, which was so nice because the room next to us, they, uh, they've they been playing pretty loud music pretty late into the night and we went to bed at like midnight, but the earplugs and like playing white noise on my phone could not hear anything. So I slept like a baby. But then I woke up and I had been sleeping on my arm and I woke up and I realized I could not feel anything on like below my elbow and my arm was a dead fish. And I tried to move my dead fish arm and I smacked myself directly right there in the eye uh, and was in immediate pain. So that woke me up. Uh, so I went to the, the bathroom and I drank a bunch of water and I took a shower and the humidity kind of helped my eye stop freaking out. It does, it still does not feel great. Uh, so I'm not wearing contacts today for sure, but it should be a good day. We're gonna try to get lots and lots of interviews today. My sister is on the way and she's gonna be my camera assistant, hopefully all day. I'm trying to not overwhelm her, she's a sensitive bean. But hopefully we'll get a bunch of interviews. I got five already, but the five that I got, I think only like two of them were single people. So uh, I got a bunch more people, uh, just not that many interviews. But yeah, oh, I don't think I said, my sister's name is Maddie. Her name's Madeline, we call her Maddie. Uh, I'm gonna go back in, in the room now finish my coffee. I, I dead fished my face and that was, that hurt. It's not a great way to start out. I was, I was, I woke up, I was so happy. I was like, ah, oh, I slept good. <laughs> Rip. Here's my fit. Here's Maddie. Hi. Presenting the beautiful Maddie. Come get in the light. We already went down and we got four interviews. Maddie's having fun being camera assistant. Uh, and we got some Owl House. We got some Princess Bubblegum. We code got Geass. We got a Code Geass. We got the Turnip Girl. We got those. And an Animal Cross. An Animal Cross. But look how cute we are. We're Sugar and Spice. You don't watch Drag Race, but that was there were I twins. Don't. There were twins on Drag Race that were like they were this aesthetic. Okay. Well, we have been walking around. Where'd you go? I oh, oh you're over here. We've been walking around doing interviews for hours. Um, but apparently today they're doing a thing where they're trying to break a world record for having like the most number of Spider-Mans. So there's just lots of Spider-Mans around. It's an arachnid infestation. It's, you know what it is, is like, if you've ever killed a wolf spider, because they keep their babies on their bodies, if you kill one, they explode into a thousand little baby spiders. That's what it is. Just with a man. It's like Which my is... favorite Spider-Man variant, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Like a colony of spiders that think it's Peter Parker. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go pee. And then we're gonna keep getting... We don't know when the Spider-Man thing is happening, but I wanna see it. Okay, the Spider-Mans are already happening. There's already a lot of Spider-Mans. Look at all the Spider-Man. 
We're up to 21 interviews. Woo! We are tired, but we did. We're having fun. We're gonna keep getting them. There's, I know there's a couple people in the costume contest that want to do it. Uh, so we're gonna try to grab them before it. Uh, but I got, we got some really, we got some really great, great ones. And if you look in the distance, you can see my favorite cosplay. The Pikachu girl, the icon herself. I don't know where it is or what it is, but I hear someone playing the trumpet. Okay, I have to pause here to explain what's about to happen. As we got closer to the time of the costume contest, I was attempting to find Beck the Noir, who's one of my Discord mods. And I wanted to do an interview with her because we had talked about it, but the interview on my phone was not working, so I couldn't really contact her. And I happened to run into Scissors Wizard, who was also in the costume contest. And when I asked if they knew where the contestants were, they offered to take me down to where they were. And so I now present the greatest footage I got all con of Scissors Wizards and Corgi Phantom as Rose Quartz and Pearl dashing through the crowds to get down to the main stage. We've made it to the floor. That was eventful. I see more what appears to be costume contest stragglers. I didn't get down there in time to get an interview with Beck, but Scissors Wizards was kind enough to claim me and my sister as their plus ones to let us into main events before the costume contest started. So I got to get a front row seat to get footage of everyone in it. So thanks so much for Scissors Wizards for letting us skip the line. That was very kind of you. Literally the dead center of the front row. But I'm here now. No one's gonna make me leave. But look at everybody, look at everybody lined up. Maddie thought we were gonna get in trouble for being in here. And like three different people have come up and hugged me. But before the contest started, I got to talk to Casey again. Here's her running backstage for some reason. Look at her go! Oh, look at her go! I do love her dress. Huh? I do love her dress. That's her wedding dress. I'm gonna get married or something like that. We have found Yaya. And if Yaya is the MC, that is very good news. It is a rite of passage to have Yaya Han yell your name. And I now present a review of the Momocon Craftsmanship Costume Contest from somebody that's competed in it four times and been in the audience three times. So first of all, this is a walk-on only contest and that basically just means that there are no skits. The way a walk-on is done is every contestant walks on the stage, strikes three poses and then leaves. So you only get about 15 seconds on the stage. And if you wanna see a perfect example of how to absolutely slay a walk-on, please just look at this garnet. The way they absolutely own this stage. They, this is in, this is absolutely incredible. Uh, but don't worry if you can't be as incredible as this garnet because what you do on the stage does not actually matter. If you're not familiar, craftsmanship costume contests have pre-judging. So earlier in the day, all of the contestants were judged in a private room so that the judges could see all of the costumes close up. The judges also make all of the decisions prior to the stage show. So the winners are actually already chosen before anybody walks on the stage. But speaking of the judges, that is one really good thing about the Momocon costume contest is they always pick really good judges. They usually pick local cosplayers who know the community, who've won awards in our community, who've won awards beyond our community, and who have a diverse skill set. The other pro is that this year in particular, they had a really good MC. If you've not been to many costume contests, you might not know that sometimes costume contests are absolutely ruined by really bad MCs. Sometimes that's because they just don't even know really familiar character names. Like I've heard people say Naruto wrong. And sometimes you get really bad MCs who don't have any idea what it's like to cosplay or make cosplay and end up saying really disrespectful stuff. Don't know where I was or where I heard this. I don't know who said this, but I legitimately remember once the MC said something like, she must have gotten a bedazzler for Christmas in reference to a beaded ball gown. It's ignorance, but to me it comes off as disrespectful. Anyway, this year they had the one and only Yaya Han, who is a cosplayer 
who is super experienced on the stage and she's familiar with the character names and she knows what it takes to make cosplays. So she's always very positive. She never says anything disrespectful and she's just a great MC. So it was a huge pro this year to see her doing that. The biggest pro for Momocon though is the awards setup. So there are a lot of costume contests where there are basically only three category awards. You get a best novice, a best journeyman, and a best master. Well, Momocon actually has nine category awards because they award three awards for sewing, three awards for fabrication, and three awards for overall. Plus a couple of extra ones like Judge's Choice, Honorable Mentions, and Best Duo and Best Group. That though is one negative because if you want to enter as a group or a duo into this costume contest, you are only eligible to win Best Group or Best Duo. There's only one award per. So it is better to go in as a solo for this particular costume contest. Another negative, which is not a huge deal and I'll get to why, but it's something I really wish Momocon would implement. And it's that you are not able to sign up to be in this costume contest prior to the con. A lot of costume contests nowadays will let you sign up online prior to the con. So when you go to the con, you already know when your pre-judging spot is, when you need to be there, and you can plan accordingly. Well, Momocon doesn't do that. Momocon makes you sign up for your spot on Friday or Saturday of the con, which means you could spend a whole lot of time making a beautiful costume with the plan of entering it at Momocon and then possibly not be able to make it to get your time slot and not get to compete. However, I don't know that that happens too much because Momocon actually, I don't, I don't even know if they have a cap for how many people they let into the contest, but they had over a hundred entries into this costume contest. So it's not a super big deal in that you might not end up with a spot. It's more so a problem that doing that to people is going to stress people out. It's also going to limit like when people can sign up for photo shoots because if you don't know when your pre-judging slot is gonna be, it's hard to know months prior when you might be signing up to shoot with a photographer when you're gonna be available to do that. And I also think it would be a pretty easy fix. So I really wish they would let people sign up prior to the con. And then back to the 100 contestants thing, I, I think this is a positive and a negative. It's a positive in that it means lots of people get to be in the costume contest and that's a good thing but it is a negative in that it makes the costume contest really, really long. That is more so a problem for the contestants than it is the people watching. Because if you're a contestant and you've been wearing that costume for eight hours and now maybe you're in armor that you can't sit down in, maybe you've been in a corset for eight hours, well, now you have to stand in a room on concrete floors or a very uncomfortable metal chair for two hours to wait for a hundred people to walk across the stage. And that can be really draining. So if you're gonna enter this, be prepared to be waiting quite a long time. The final negative I have is for people in the audience. And that is that the chairs in made events are terrible and I hate them. They are like those awful metal, chairs that have no padding on them. So if you're gonna come watch this, bring a pillow or something cause your, your butt's gonna hurt and you're gonna wanna leave. Anyway, because the costume contest was so long, I got clips of almost everybody. I wasn't able to get everybody because I had to switch camera batteries and I was not able to get the awards because uh, we were very cold and tired and hungry and we just decided to get out of there halfway through the awards so that we didn't get stuck in the room and I could go to the bathroom. It's still going, but it's freezing and I'm cold and hungry and I have to pee. We had a dip, but... Uh, uh, we haven't eaten since like, what? Uh, yeah, we have, we have not eaten anything. Uh, that was not smart, but I got most of the awards. I got lots of clips of everybody. And then I was like, why am I doing this? I'm cold and I'm tired. I want to go to get in my hotel bed. So I'm going to go do that. And that is probably going to go home. Yeah, bye. Say bye to the vlog. Bye. But if you are interested in seeing who won, Casey did vlog the end of the competition. So you can go check that out in her vlog. With the costume contest over, I went back up to my room, realized I had 18,000 steps and that was my Saturday. Sunday morning came and we kind of just wanted to go home. So I packed up my giant mess and we headed out. 
Well, that was my Momocon. Momocon really is like, it is my favorite Atlanta convention. Of the three major ones, Momocon is the one best suited to my interests. It's, it's, it's also just really well run. I do feel like I sort of over contented myself this year doing two videos at it. So I feel a little disappointed that I didn't like really get to experience it. I never got to go play the games in the game room, but I still had a whole lot of fun. Thanks to my sister Maddie for coming and helping me film the interview video and being in the vlog. Thanks to Joe for doing Joe stuff. Joe usually helps with stuff, so thanks to Joe. Uh, and thanks to you for watching. If you wanna support the channel directly, you can check out my Patreon where you get exclusive content like update videos, you get to know real-time updates on cosplays I'm working on, and it's pay as you can, so you can get all that for a dollar if you want to. But if you're just watching, liking, commenting, sending the video to a friend or your mom, or subscribing, then you're supporting the channel too. No, really, all of those things really do help support the channel, so hit that like button. Oh, and thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can get a full month of Skillshare absolutely free when you use the link in the description. I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you to the patrons. Lei, Cord and Nora, Princess of Pastels, Marshy, No Con Cos, Maria Teresa, Kelly, Spooky Kitsune Cosplay, Morning Mist Cosplay, Jennifer, Lunar Lepis Cosplay, Sherry, Hadil, No Roman, LOL, Amai Jelly, Veli Slava, Hannah, Fake Smiley 7, Sebastian, Amar, Simrel, Matcha Kit Kat, Deli Rod, Mina, Stephanie, Mo, Bailey, Almi Fox, Alora Polaris Cosplay, Aaron, Tamaki Potato, Gabby Bear, Neil, Jessica, Renee, Sarah, Kiwi Kikos, Lapis, Rhonda, Another Zip Tie, Hazel, Alec, Lady Senshi, Rambuland Cosplay, MT Gret, Free Wings Cosplay, Jenna, Ashton, Constance, Frosty Blades, Rory, Kimberly, Tam Tam the Taylor, Ray Sparks, Legfish, Swingularity, Amanda, Paul, Joby, GT Cosplay, Zihibi, Cal, Zanzuffle, Flair, Claudia, Katie, Snot Muncher, Allison, Queen Platypus, Reverie Rose 16, Taylor, Tessa Bo, Haley, Alyssa, Matt, Max, Akima Aki, Chibi Lease, Rainbow Lola, Gloom Shroom, Infinite Salad, Miba, Kel, Hubasta, Mads, Ollie, Boondingles, The King Theory, Magda, Paint It So, Sky, Ash, Sleepy Ellie, Audrey, Allison, Spacey, Stitches, Foxy McLoxy, Sunny, Coco Yumi, Skasa, Ariana, Articus, Minor, Reina, Food Penguin, Emmy, Alyssa, Stephanie, Katie, Experimental Blue, Toby, Shellman, Alice, Lena, Sostra, Slush Puff, aka Corn Copy, Avandaria, Samantha, Faybound, Adriana, Amber, Kim, Fennec, Emma, Kaimatsu, Block Kitty DJ, Meredith, Sarah, Taylor, Kira Draws, Cowbones, Bianca, Lunar, Gaia, Lularush, Cosplay, Delos, Fluffy Hair, Marcy, So Into Music, Amelia, Julian, Cam, Zen, Pin, Snip, and Claire.